Welcome back to Paul's Tech News. The world is changing, my friends, and so, much like the tech news itself, we must adapt if we hope to survive. To that end, I have some crazy ideas in the works that I am hoping to share with you all soon, but for now, I wanted to start with a quick PSA. As I work to plan and build out the future of my channel, I will be producing slightly fewer videos than usual. So you'll probably only be seeing one to two videos per week instead of the usual three that I aim for for the next one to two months. I'm still aiming to produce tech news on Sundays, but the calendar for May and June is a bit of a mess. So there will be one today, one in two weeks on May 21st, and then a few weeks break until I bring the show back on June 18th. But at the beginning of June, I will be posting a bunch of videos from Computex in Taipei, Taiwan. I will share more about my mysterious plans in the next week or so, but that's enough housekeeping for this intro. Now, let's talk about newly leaked GPUs, price drops, and lobster smuggling as we explore what happened in this past week of tech news. Excellent! Today's video is brought to you by the Corsair Xenion Flex OLED Gaming Monitor, which can bend from completely flat up to 800R curvature. But there's a lot more to this display, which features an ultra-wide 45-inch 3440x1440 panel with a 240Hz refresh rate and 0.03 millisecond gray-to-gray -gray response time. The spec list also includes NVIDIA G-Sync compatibility, AMD FreeSync Premium certification, Auto HDR with up to 1000 nit brightness, 99% DCI-P3 color gamut coverage, a sophisticated burn-in prevention system, and an integrated stand with a range of connectivity. Click the sponsor link in the video description for more on the Corsair Xenion Flex. We begin today with Intel, who plans to gouge their eyes out, specifically the letter eyes that they have been using to loosely rank their CPU families since they first debuted alongside the Nehalem architecture in 2008. That's about 15 years of Core i3, Core i5, and Core i7 CPUs, as well as the i9s that started popping up starting in 2017. The first indication that Intel's eyes were failing was cited on Monday, when an Ashes of the Singularity benchmark run showed up in the database, listing a mysterious 18-thread Core Ultra 5 1003H for the CPU. That same day, Bernard Fernandez, Intel's Director of Global Communications, tweeted to confirm that they're updating the brand as they prepare for Meteor Lake's debut, expected later this year or in early 2024. Going with Ultra instead of I accomplishes several things for Intel. It suggests that any given processor with that name is the best possible processor known to man. It adds four extra letters and a space to each CPU's name, since customers often request that tech product names be longer and more convoluted, and it still maintains a broad and vaguely confusing branding schema that, much like an i7 processor from 2010, can be used by scammy eBay sellers to trick hapless consumers into thinking they're getting a high-end processor even though it's actually 5 or 10 plus years old, and they conveniently left out what generation it was from. Seems like a great move on all levels, but I think there's one more awesome reason for the timing on this. Intel is rumored to be working on a Raptor Lake refresh later in 2023. And what better way to pretend new CPUs that are actually based on the same architecture as your old CPUs are completely different than by calling them a completely different name. It's like that old saying, in the land of people with no eyes, the ultra CPU is king. I might be paraphrasing there. We are all undoubtedly hardened cynics when it comes to things like reports of GPU prices falling, because it's usually some sort of ruse to trick PC gamers out of their hard-earned cash, but I felt compelled to gather a handful of them together this week for your assessment. Guru3D reports that there is surplus GPU stock, and according to the basic economic principles that I learned about in high school, an excess of stock should result in lower prices to help increase demand and sell off said inventory. Nvidia in particular seems to have 220 days worth of backlogged inventory at TSMC, quite above the 92 day average for all of TSMC's customers. So are GPUs on sale now? Yes, sort of to a degree. The RTX 3070, which is 2.5 years old and basically useless now according to recent reports due to its pitiful 8GB VRAM setup, can now be found for less than the original $500 MSRP. I know, the clouds parting and the god rays and the choirs of angels singing, those are all appropriate accompaniment for this news. 450 euros instead of 500. And even here in the US, there is an RTX 3070 for 460 bucks on Newegg right now. Add to cart, 
guess it's $461. I even found an RTX 3070 Ti for $540 after promo code or straight up for 560 bucks over on Amazon. 3dcenter.org said that EU prices, specifically in Germany, are down 10 to 20% since January, which is very good news. But who cares about those mid-range cards for poor people? Are there any discounts at the high end? Apparently, yes to that as well, with the RTX 4090 seeing consistent price reductions each month this year, going from 1,949 euros originally to 1,769 this week. And a few models here in the US dipping below the $1,600 MSRP, like this PNY Accelerate Gaming Verto Epic X RGB GeForce RTX 4090 24 gig video card, which is going for $1,550 at Adorama. I guess. What a mouthful that product name is. PNY Technologies NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4090 24 gig Accelerate Gaming Verto Epic X GDDR6X RGB Triple Fan Graphics Card DLSS 3. <coughs> And yes, even AMD's RX 7000 series GPUs are coming down in price ever so slowly, as shown over here on Tom's Hardware, with a Sapphire Pulse Radeon RX 7900 XTX going for $950 after promo code at Newegg, although that deal is probably over by now. And I've been finding quite a few Radeon RX 7900 XTs going for below $800 for quite a few models. I remain skeptical that this trend will continue, of course, but I am refreshed to bring you GPU pricing news that is good for a change. Wednesday and Thursday saw two pretty sizable dumps, that's info dumps, mind you, about upcoming video cards that caught my eye. The first was posted to the AMD subreddit by Cherry T. Stain, who found that a Rockham pull request on GitHub revealed a list of previously unannounced Radeon GPUs, from the 7600S all the way up to the 7950XTX. Alongside each is listed a GPU codename, providing some info as to how each GPU might be configured, although this is still in the rumor category, so keep in mind that things might change. Apart from apparently confirming a new flagship 7950 class Radeon GPU, the list brings up a few questions, such as, where are the non-XT GPUs at for the most part? Or is XTX the new XT? and XT is now just equivalent to non-XT status. There's also not a lot of variety for the Radeon RX 7800 XT and the GFX 1101 GPU it seems to be based on. But then on Thursday, Twitter info smuggler Harukaze5719 posted this list of gigabyte GPUs taken from that old standby source, the Eurasian Economic Commission's product registry. Gigabyte seems to have a couple Radeon RX 7600 GPU custom designs in the work, as well as nine variants of the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4060 Ti. Both GPUs are expected to launch at the end of May, and both GPUs have already been thoroughly trashed by commenters for their 8 gig VRAM buffer, because there's this new stance in the past month or three that 8 gigs of VRAM is awful, and any GPU with that allocation should be tossed into a sizable dump, I guess. But hopefully we'll get a look at actual performance for these GPUs later this month. And now let us all slip off our work pants and pull on a soft, comfy pair of tech briefs, which are now ribbed, so you have a snack available at all times. Intel has CPUs now, but they will also have CPUs in the future, and some will be based on their 18A and 20A process nodes, which is what Intel is calling their 1.8 nanometer and 2 nanometer manufacturing technologies. Intel will be revealing more about 18A and 20A at a symposium in June, but in the meantime, they've demoed an experimental chip with all E-cores and a new power delivery method called PowerVIA, which is a backside power delivery network. As something of an expert on backside power delivery myself, I am surprised Intel did not consult me on this one, but the upshot of separating a CPU's I.O. and power wiring by moving the power rails to the backside of the chip increases potential transistor density, reduces crosstalk, and provided a 5% clock speed improvement. Look for Intel 20A-based CPUs in late 2024 or 2025. We're all looking forward to AI taking over our lives completely, but what happens when AI is used to hack AI? On Tuesday, OpenAI, developer of ChatGPT, confirmed a data breach that affected the popular AI service this week, which was caused by a vulnerability in the code's open source library. The exploit was patched within days of discovery, but briefly allowed some users to see another active user's first and last name, email address, payment address, and truncated credit card info. 
open source exploits of this kind can be tricky because so many users develop and access the code. But fortunately, they just asked ChatGPT what to do, and the AI said, we should all just relax because everything is fine. Trusted platform module shenanigans continued this week with yet another vulnerability discovered that defeats the security measure in order to access encrypted BitLocker files, amongst other things. Researchers at the Technical University of Berlin found that AMD's firmware-based Trusted Platform Module, or FTPM, can be tricked into providing full access to the cryptographic data it is trusted to protect via a voltage fault injection attack. They have cleverly dubbed this method Fall TPM, and the bad news is that they can do it with about $200 worth of off-the-shelf hardware. Also, this vulnerability can't be patched. The good news is that setting up Fall TPM requires physical access to the machine and a couple hours of time to wire all this stuff up. Also, it seems to only affect Zen 2 and Zen 3 CPUs for now. AMD did reply and said, yeah, we heard about that too. Let's close with a unique story out of China, as an entrepreneuring smuggler was discovered to have planted 70 NVIDIA Quadro GPUs amongst a shipment of lobsters. Live lobsters, too. 200 of them, which were intermingled with the Quadro K2200 GPUs in a van that attempted to cross the Hong Kong-Macau Bridge. Cops confiscated the cards and the crustaceans who were attempting to assemble workstations to house the hijacked hardware before they realized that the Quadro K2200 launched in 2014 and only has 4 gigs of VRAM, and obviously even a lobster knows that you need more than 8 gigs of VRAM to get by in 2023. So there you have it guys, tech news for the week, and if you liked it, click that like button or leave me a comment down below. While you're down there, all of the articles I talked about today are linked in the description if you're interested, and check out my store at paulshardware.net for high quality merchandise, t-shirts, hoodies, beer sets, and more. Subscribing to my channel is always a good call too. Thanks again everyone, and we'll see you soon.